tell you what, where is Neva? She's sitting here somewhere. Why don't you tell them what happened? Well, if anything, it almost seemed like the um, microwaved ones grew better than the uh, tap water, but I don't know. They might have just been in the right place on the windowsill. I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of variables here, folks, you have to think about if you're going to do a scientific study, right? How much illumination? What time of day? That's, you, you, that all, those are all variables, are they not? And the average poor person that doesn't know anything about the scientific world just believes it because it sounds correct, but it's wrong. How did I get off on that? Who, who brought me up to that? Who, who's guilty? Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh. Poisons. Fancy word, toxin. Virus. Does virus cause cancer? Yeah. How do they do that? They can mutate the DNA. Uh, how about alcohol? You've heard that. Every drink. Free radicals, that's a fancy word for oxidization. I, I used that term already, didn't I say? When that oil is first oxidized, it becomes a free radical, which uh, is also a carcinogen. Plant oils. Are you convinced yet, folks, that plant oils are causing cancer? I've shown you reference after reference from top scientists. Copy error big one. Uh, I, I'd love to get into that, but I guess I won't. Obesity, uh, estrogen, not really, uh, because the uh, estrogen receptors, uh, well, estrogen, if the tumor is ER positive, there's about 10 different kinds of breast cancer. ER positive, ER negative, and on and on the list goes. And if it's an ER positive cancer, which is the most common type, uh, and a woman is making estrogen, depending on what time of life it is for her, that estrogen does make the cancer grow more rapidly. And tamoxifen, how many of you know that the name of that drug? Have heard it before? Tamoxifen? It's a drug that has the... Uh, that is shaped a little bit like estrogen and tends to occupy the estrogen receptor. Got that? So that, that the estrogen can't make that cancer grow faster. The problem is, folks, it's a drug and it has side effects. It's a pretty awful drug. But you, you kind of weigh the evidence and you say, should I take the drug to help me survive a little bit or something? But that's what's going on. Okay. Um, I'm going to carry on. Yes, dear. I can't hear you, sweetheart. Okay. All right. Um, you all know the word enzyme, don't you? Enzyme is a protein. Proteins are made by our bodies and by any other living creature. A living cell makes enzymes. And the concern by some people is that uh, the microwave will break down any protein, friends. You know this. You cook something, and the stiffness becomes soft because you've broken down. When, when breaking down means you altered the chemical structure or actually broke a molecule in half. And so it's tender now instead of tough, right? And uh, that happens in a microwave just like it happens in a boiling pot. And it doesn't, by the way, and I told you an enzyme is a protein. When you and I eat proteins, folks, we cut them up into pieces, into the individual amino acids. And our bodies use those. So if an enzyme in a microwave got broken down a bit, does it matter? Say no. Some of you are nodding your head. You're supposed to shake your head. I didn't make it clear, I guess. Uh, when you eat a protein, you cut it up into pieces. You, your body does. If the microwave does some cutting before you ate it, does it matter? No. Okay. You should come up here and help me, dear. 
Because your body makes every enzyme that you need. Okay, uh, that's a good comment. I thought we would have known that, but all the enzymes that you need, you don't get them from the food, folks. You eat a protein, and that protein gets busted up into amino acids. Are you all with me on that, to repeat myself? Every enzyme that you need, your body makes it when and where you need it, inside the cell. The ribosome is the place where all proteins are manufactured that you need, uh, based on the sequence of the ladders in the gene. Are we clear on that? It's a good thing Neva's here. This would be a mess, wouldn't it? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Okay. Um, go ahead. Oh, she says, is there a replacement for plant-based oils? Um, not really, uh, but you, you can cook wonderful things. Listen, you've heard me say this before. Neva's been at this for, we started living like this 55 years ago. She's been making recipes. She can hardly get in the kitchen without making a new recipe. And, uh, that's all you need is a recipe that is, is pardon me? Oh yeah, we don't, every recipe in our three books, no, not a drop of oil in any recipe. And they're delicious, including the ice cream. And you just have to think about what the purpose is of that oil. It's maybe to keep the food from sticking to the pan and burning and, um, but you can use water and uh, steam it slightly. And uh, like saute, you know, that word. In water. Saute in water. You, all that is is to, uh, is to um, you know, get the, the food a little bit cooked to put it in a dish. So I know that the oil flavor, that's the other thing, is the flavor. And so often I will, some, I will sometimes use coconut milk instead of um, oil to fry something or to saute something. Another purpose is to give tenderness to muffins or cake or certain things. And then I use blended nuts. But of course, I realize that nuts are kind of expensive it depends on where you live and so on. Maybe coconut milk then is a good alternative because that, I mean, I've seen these truckloads of coconuts going everywhere. It takes a little more time though. It's a lot easier to reach for that bottle and so on, but, oh, let's just get simple. Maybe that's what we need, get simpler in our way of cooking and enjoying our food. Keep the microphone, dear, just go ahead and keep it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, she's talking about the same thing, using water and everybody loves it. Yeah. We use Teflon, Teflon waffle iron, Teflon pan. Say it again. Ah, tef he's, he's asking. <laughs> they say fish oil is good. They're just wrong. No, it oxidizes, it oxidizes, and it's bad for you, yeah. And I won't agree with on the Teflon issue. Uh, Teflon is stable up to about 560 degrees. When it gets hotter than that, and in fact, I tell people everywhere, if you're gonna use Teflon, never put it on the stove without water or food in it, uh, because it'll get too hot too quick, especially if it's a gas stove, and that is toxic but up till that time, it doesn't break down. The radiation of the cell phone. I just talked, I talked about it a while ago. It's not an issue. It's very weak. I talked about it with those kids putting those four phones there and pre Well, you probably know research is being done in the States and maybe here to see if continual use of cell phones might be causing some kind of a problem. It's possible, but 
it's probably the heat and not the radiation. You, you keep something warm long enough in one spot and, and over and over, day after day after day, it could cause problems. And that's what kids do, isn't it? Yeah. Earplug or something, yeah. 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 I, I think it's a very small... Listen, folks, I think these are very small issues in according... It, it compares to what's happening with people's diets. You understand what I'm saying? We're picking at little issues that are very inconsequential, in my opinion. And listen, my opinion isn't just mine, folks. I'm talking about a host of scientists that I have contact with and physicians. All of these things we have discussed together. And a lot of times they depend on me because they're not physicists, but we talk about these things and work through them. This is not just one man's opinion. I think we've gone long enough. Um, I'd rather spend the Sabbath doing more constructive things. There was supposed to be another topic. Maybe a year from now, I'll come back and see if anybody's left to talk to. What do you think? Shall we quit? Haven't we sat long enough? Well, there was another topic. Uh, I'm just worried about the amount of time we're spending. Uh, what's, what, what does the program say? What was the other? Oh, protein. The what? The heart I finished already. Oh, carbohydrates. Now you need them, now you don't. No, that was protein. Uh, I don't think I had a topic just on carbohydrates. It was on protein. Now you need it, now you don't. What? That will be the last topic. But the, 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 the topic is the carbohydrates. Oh, uh, let me see the program. What does it say? I can't see it when you tilt it that. You put it up to, to uh... just a minute. Just don't hold it so close to me. Oh, okay. You need to avoid carbs, right? Wrong. That was it. Yeah. Here's what's going on. I thought I mentioned this. When you buy carbohydrate in the store, it's usually junk food. It's flour, sugar, frosting, it's oils, it's, it, there's carbohydrate in there, but when you buy it in a package, it's, it's, it's made into junk food. That's the issue. That's not pure carbohydrate. Pure carbohydrate is good for you. How do you get pure carbohydrate? Eat plants. So unrefi unrefined carbohydrate is perfect food, perfect fuel. I've talked about that, haven't I? Okay. So what was the other thing? Protein. I can make that real short. <clears throat> Doesn't everybody know that if you're going to build big muscles, you need lots of protein? Say yes. Don't you all know that? Pardon? Steroids is really bad. Too much protein is bad. Why? Because it causes bone loss and it's hard on the kidneys. And if it's animal protein, it's even worse in terms of promoting cancer, particularly cancer and heart disease from too much animal protein. So the idea of protein, now you need it, now you don't, is this crazy battle. Uh, I want you to be informed on one interesting point. If, if some man is trying to develop muscles and he has been told he should eat a lot of protein, listen carefully, his muscles will grow a little faster. But it's bad for him. Now, he may not care because he wants to look tough when he's young. 